Hey, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. Today I thought we'd paint the little animated opening. That's the little picture you see at the beginning of each show, and it just sort of happens. And I'll show you how that picture was made. Now, it only takes a few minutes to paint it. It takes a lot of fantastic people a long time to animate it. So I tell you what, let's start out having run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. While they're doing that, let me tell you what I've done up here. I have my standard old pre-stretched canvas up here, and I've covered it with a thin, even coat of the liquid white. So it's all ready to go, so let's go. Today, we'll start off with a big brush, big old two-inch brush. I'm gonna go into a small amount of alizarin crimson, and you need very little color here. Just wanna put a little pinkish glow in the sky, just a little, okay? Now then, let's go right up in here, and we'll just make some little crisscross strokes. And we'll just lay in a happy little sky, just like so. There we go, that's all there is to it. That's all there is. Now, be careful when you put this on, because we don't want to set this sky on fire. We just want to give it a little glow, make it warm. There. Okay, now then, while I have that going, there's a hair, I'll just knock it off. While I have that on the brush, I add a little touch more. Same way, just tap the brush into a small, small amount. And then, we'll put a little touch right here where we know there's gonna be some water. And crimson's not a very strong color, so it doesn't matter where we put it. If we don't like it, we can cover it up easy. Okay. Now then, we had some big clouds that was floating around the sky. We can just mix with a brush here. We'll go back into crimson. I'll reach down here and get the least little touch of thalo blue. So we have a lizard crimson and thalo blue, making a lavender color. Proportionately, much more crimson than blue. Much, much more. Okay, let's go back up here. Now then, we're just sort of using little circular strokes. We'll just sort of dance in some, some little cloud shapes. Little cloud shapes. Let me get a little more color on my brush. There. See there? And use, use round. Go round, round, round like that. And it makes beautiful little cloud things just sort of happen automatically. You don't have to worry about it. Let the brush work. Shoot, this is, this is a lazy man's way of painting here. There we go. And some little things down in here wherever we want them. There, maybe up in here. Now this will not be an exact duplicate of what we did for the animated opening. But it'll be close enough that you can see exactly how it was made. There we go. Big old cloud just sort of hangs right out here and plays around. All we're doing is just filling in some color. And by mixing these colors on the brush, you get, a, you get a multitude of variations that happen in here that would be very difficult to do if you were just adding these two colors on. All kinds of things just happen automatically. And you don't even have to worry about it or think about it, it just happens. Just let it go. Very quickly, with a little practice, you learn to use anything that happens here. And that's when it's really fun. Okay, I'm gonna wash the brush. And we wash our brush with just odorless thinner, shake it off, <laughs> and cover the whole studio. You know, I've made such a mess in here, they're moving to a new studio. There. We've got the walls covered here, and all the camera people are covered. Okay, now with a clean, dry brush, all I'm doing is just blending this out some. Just blend it out. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit more of the color, the same blue and crimson, and, and we'll put a little touch where we want to, have, to emphasize a darker cloud, we want it to stand out. There. Just here and there, maybe there's a little dark or something. Makes your sky a little stronger, a little more interesting. Okay, now while I have that color, on my brush, the thalo blue and a lizard crimson. We'll add just a little bit more. And let's go down here where our water is going to be. 
that we can put in a little bit of water, pull from the outside in. So you have these little feathered edges here. So they're not harsh, strong edges. It's easier to blend those out. Okay, other side, a little bit over here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this crimson that you have in the center will cover up very easy, so be careful. It'll go away and leave you. There. Okay. Now, very lightly, we can just blend this together. And that easy. We have a happy little sky and water in just a couple of minutes. Now, here, all I'm doing is just blending all this together. And that's a super way to make a very effective little sky. Now, let's go. Let's go back into that same color, lizard crimson, thalo blue. Just mix it right on the brush. It's the easiest way. And let's begin putting in some little shapes here for some little trees and stuff that live in the background. I want this to be a little darker now so it stands out. Using just a corner of the brush, we can just begin tapping in all kinds of little, just little basic shapes. You have to make big decisions now. Where is your tree? How big is he? Does he live here? Does he live there? Where do you want him? Wherever you want him, that's exactly the right place for him to be. Is he tall, short? Okay, there he goes. There's a big one right there. There. See? Just sort of visualize this in your mind and drop it off. That's all you have to do. Anything that your mind can see, you can paint. another tree here. And as I mentioned earlier, this will not be an exact duplicate of what was on the beginning of the show, but it certainly will show you how it was made. Certainly will show you that. And let's see here, a little more color, blue, lizard crimson. And let's go right in here. I want to add a little black to that. I want to start getting a little darker. So it makes deep shadows in there. So we have crimson and blue, and now a little bit of the midnight black. And a big tree here. So we can begin putting that in. There, just think where you, where you want the limbs to hang. There's gonna be some big overhanging limbs there. There they come. And one there, wherever you want them. Okay. And already, see, we have the whole background in, all of our basic shapes, and it only takes a second. All right, now you have to make a big decision. Where do you want reflections? All you have to do, grab it, because the canvas is wet, the paint will slide. The liquid white's under there, it allows the paint to move. Just pull it straight down, straight down, like that and then go across lightly. And we have instant reflections. Isn't that fantastic? That easy. Now, let's use the liner brush. I'm gonna dip it into some paint thinner and then go right into a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. I want this to be very thin, like ink. Just straight Van Dyke Brown. Turn the brush in there and pull it. That brings it to a beautiful sharp point. Liner brush has very long bristles, so it holds a lot of paint. Now we can come right up in here, and let's just begin putting in the indication of some little tree trunks here and there. There, see them? Okay, maybe there's a few little things that stick out here and there, wherever you want them. These are fun to make. Now if you have trouble making your paint flow, add some paint thinner. Just means your paint's not quite thin enough. Paints that we use are very, very firm, very dry. It allows us to paint over the top of them while they're still wet. If you start with a thin paint, ooh, you're in, gonna be in Agony City, gonna be upset with me. Very dry, firm paint. It's most, most important. There we are. Wherever you want. 
just a few little sticks and twigs. Well, let's use the old one-inch brush today. Begin putting some, some highlights on some of those. Okay, go right into a little bit of the yellow. This is just cad yellow. Reach up here, be right back. Wait on me. There we are. A little bit of sap green added to it. Now, tap the brush. Tap it. So you give it a little push. There we are. Now, let's go up here. Begin deciding where the leaves are on these trees, all the little bright things. Just sort of touch it, tap gently downward, and begin building form and shape into your tree. Don't just hit these at random. Think about little limbs that live in here and all the little places the birds are going to sit. Add a little yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow here and there. There we go. You can just make some of the most fantastic little trees and bushes just using the corner of the brush. Two-inch brush works very well also. Okay, there we are. One over here. Don't want this one left out. Okay, and then we got a big one that's way up here in the sky. Just begin creating all kinds of little patterns and on his arms. There they are. Okay, now I'm going to add a little more sap green to my color. I want to begin getting a little darker. And maybe down in here, we're beginning to pick up some little individual bushes. I made this a little darker because there's shadows down here. There we go. The trees cause shadows to be here, so these shouldn't be quite as bright. Here and there, the light's going to zing through, and you might have one that shines. But overall, a little bit darker. There we go. Maybe over here, we'll have a few. But just sort of pick them out. Make determinations where you think they'd live and drop them in. There we are. Okay. Shoot, let's get crazy. I'm going to take some black, some Prussian blue. We'll use some Van Dyke brown, a little sap green. Shoot a little crimson. Sort of mix it all together. Okay, let me clean my knife off here and grab a fan brush. There we go. Now I'm going to load the fan brush full of color. A lot of paint in it, both sides. We'll make a, the little evergreens that were back here. We'll have one that lives right there. Just start with a line, use the corner of the brush, and just sort of go back and forth, back and forth. There. That little evergreen will just jump right out there. Okay, let's have one right there. See there? They hide in that brush. All you have to do is just push them out. Let's go way over an end here and we'll put in a little evergreen or two over here. There he is. We'll give him a little friend. Trees need friends too. Okay. Now, let's take a one inch brush and pull it through that same color. And let's begin putting in some dark backgrounds here for some bushes. You need the dark so the light will show. It's the only reason we're putting this in here. Just so the just so the light color will show. If you put light against light, you have nothing, or dark against dark. You have absolutely nothing. There. Now then, one inch brush, and I'm going to dip it into a small amount of the liquid white. And I dip it into the liquid white only to thin the paint only to thin it. Pull this in one direction, load a lot of color into the bristles. Now then, I want these to sparkle. I want them to stand out. Look at that. Mm. Here we're pushing upward with a brush. There's a lot of paint, so all you have to do is give it a gentle little push, and you can just make beautiful, beautiful little bushes back here. Now, sometimes I get a lot of letters. People have problems making this work. 
usually the problem is that there's not enough paint in the bristles and you have to push too hard and then it sort of mooshes. It's <laughs> a new word I just made up. And do one bush at a time. Each one of these is an individual. Treat him as such. There we go. Now then, I'm gonna go back to my lavender color, just a little blue and a little crimson. And underneath here, we're gonna begin building some, some land masses. We need a place for that little cabin to set. So all we do is add in a little bit of color. Once again, we're putting in dark so our light will show. Anything that hangs down here, you just pull it down, turn it into a reflection. Look at that. That's super instant reflections. Now then, I'm gonna grab another. Yeah, there's a, we use a two inch brush today, what the heck. We'll go right into the sap green, cad yellow, little yellow ochre. Just sort of mix these colors on the brush. Now then, let's begin putting in some little grassy areas. We need a nice place back here for that little cabin to sit. There. See there? It's unreal what you can do with a big old brush. All we're doing here is just tapping. Just tapping. Creates all those nice soft little grassy areas. And I'm varying the colors between all the yellows and every once in a while the least little touch of the bright red. Don't need much of that, but it gives it a nice orangey flavor once in a while. Sparkles it up. There. Fantastic. Knew you could do it. Let's have some fun. I want to start working on my little cabin. So come right up in here. I'll scrape in a few little sticks and stuff with a clean knife. Now then, decide where your cabin's going to live. Now I think we'll have this one right about here. Take the knife, scrape out a basic shape. That's just about the easiest way I have found to lay out a cabin. All you have to do is just sort of scrape out where you think he'll live. And at this point, you're still not committed. You could still change your mind here, no, no problem. Now we'll take some Van Dyke Brown and we can begin just blocking him in. And that's all we're doing here. We're just applying color. We're still not committed. We could change our mind at this point if we wanted to. See, down the side, down the front, just blocking in color, that's all. Once again, we're putting this dark in, so when we put a lighter color on it, it'll stand out. Okay, now, let's, for the roof, we'll use some red, a little dark sienna, put a little yellow ochre in it too, what the heck. There, maybe a touch of white. Mmm, nice color. Looks good enough to eat. Now, a little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Just barely touching. Just sort of let it bounce right down the roof, just bloop, bloop, bloop. See, just barely touch. Make it look old, and like it's had a rough time. Now then I'm gonna put the least little bit of white on my knife and just sort of highlight the edges so they stand out nice. Now you can see that rascal. Now I'm gonna go to the little knife. I'm gonna take some white and midnight black. White and black on the small knife. I'm looking for a gray color. Just pull it out, and once again, our little roll of paint. Even though we're using the small knife, still that little roll of paint. Now, just barely touching. Pull down. A little bit on the other side. There. Now, toward the back of the cabin, in my mind, there's going to be less light hitting over here. So I'm going to add a little more black to my color to darken it. And come right there. That easy. You can do anything on this canvas. Have a little little line right across there, and maybe here and there there's some little things. 
Just adds a little interest to your cabin. Give them a window too. Right here, just use a small edge of the small knife. See, there's one window. There's another window. Now we can take the knife and we can do a cabinectomy. That's where we just cut it off so it looks right. Now, back to my two inch brush. A little bit of the grass color. We can put some grass right around his foot so bring them all together. It'd be nice if it was that easy to, to have a lawn in your yard. Now, there was a little, little fence out here, so just take, I just use a little bit of the liquid white on the liner brush. See, just, there goes our little fence. That easy. A little more, put some rails across it. And we have a little white fence out here. Maybe, watch here, you can put one up here and go that way. Make that sound again, go around the corner. That's sneaky, huh? Okay. Now then, find my big brush. Get a little more of the lavender color, just thalo blue, lizard and crimson. Tap it into this brush. Okay, now then, let's begin working on some land masses here. I have to make some big decisions. I think there was one that came right out like that. Where have you want? We need to pull a little reflection under that though so it sets down in the water. Otherwise it won't look right. Just, it won't come out and play with you. Okay, back to my yellows with a big brush. Tap a little in there. Okay, let's go back up here. And, and, we can just begin highlighting all those little things. See, the dark color is only there once again, I know you're tired of hearing that, but, but it's only there so that your light color just jumps out at you. There. Layer after layer. Start the part that's the farthest away and work forward. Always working forward. There. Okay. Let's take the knife, some Van Dyke Brown. Let's put us some land here and there. Just an indication. Need a little bit of land to hold all this together. There we go. Like so. Maybe out here. There we are. A little bit of land out here. We don't want this one left out either. And we could have a rock down here. Whatever. Whatever. If it makes you happy, it's good. Do it. Mm. Take a little brown, a little white. And just here and there, just put the indication of a little highlight. Out here on this big stone, need a little, like so. Okay, then we'll take some liquid white. And with that, we can just put us in a little water line. That cleans up the edges and brings everything together do that firmly. Act like you're trying to cut a hole right through the canvas. There. You can have a little ripple here and there if you want it. But keep these lines basically straight or your water will look, as I've said before, it'll look just like it's going to run out of the painting and get your floor wet. Okay. Clean off my old knife here. I think it's time we had some fun. I'm gonna take a big bunch of Van Dyke Brown on my knife, just pull it out, pull it out, cut off a big roll of paint, okay? Now, we had a big tree, and our big tree lives, does now, right there. Just pull it in. Be brave, this is your bravery test on this painting. There we go. These trees are fun, and they really make your painting stand out. Now then, I'm gonna take some white, a little bit of brown, a little touch of, little touch of the bright red in it. There, just, just like you're laying snow on the mountain. Just let that graze. Just, just 
barely touch. Barely touch. When this is dry, it'll feel like real bark. That's what my dog does, real bark. There, a little bit of blue on the other side, just to indicate a little reflected light. Take our liner brush, and go back into the Van Dyke Brown, and this has paint thinner on it, so it's very, very thin. And we can come right up in here, in here, in there. We just add the indication of a nice tree branch and limbs and all kinds of things. Shoot wherever you want them, wherever you want them. Back to our one inch brush. One inch brush, we'll go into some of the yellows and stuff. Now then, let's put some highlights. Mm. That's fantastic. All we're doing here is just tapping. Just put some highlights. I want this old tree to stand out here. Big, strong son of a gun. There. Now your thin paint will stick to the thicker paint. There we go. Just let it go right across there. You can put a little paint thinner in your paint if you want to. Just to make it a little bit thinner. And I think with that, we have a completed painting. We're going to call this one finished. I hope you've enjoyed it. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless. I look forward to seeing you next time. Welcome back. I'm certainly glad to see you today. You ready to do a fantastic little painting with me? Super. Tell you what, let's start out and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along. While they're doing that, let me tell you what I've done. I've got my standard old canvas up here, and I've covered it with a thin, even coat of the liquid white, and it's all wet and it's ready to go. So let's get started. I'm going to start out today with the old two-inch brush. Shoot, we'll just have a good time today. Just have a good time. I'm going to take a, a little bit of phthalo blue here. Just work a little bit into the bristles. There. Let's go up here. Now then, let's just start up here making little, little crisscross strokes, little X's. There. See, the color continually blends with the liquid white, and it gets lighter and lighter in value as it works downward. And in the landscape, that's exactly what we're looking for. We want it to get lighter and lighter toward the horizon. There we go. A little bit more color, and we'll just come right on down like so, wherever, wherever, it doesn't really matter. I thought today may be such a fantastic day, it's a good day to be alive, let's, let's just do a nice happy little scene, just sort of let it happen, let's see, let's see what we come up with, and very lightly, just going to blend the entire sky. All right. That worked out pretty good. Shoot, let's keep going here. I'm going to take some blue and alizarin crimson. We'll just mix a little bit of this on the brush. Thalo blue and alizarin crimson. I want, a, I want a little lavender color there. Something about like so. It doesn't matter. Let's have a happy little cloud that just sort of floats around. We'll put in some dark. Just using little round circular strokes. A little bit of dark shadow color. Then we'll come back and we'll highlight that little rascal. We'll make him shine. Stand out in the sun with just little circular strokes. There we go. Maybe he comes, we don't know, somewhere over in here. What the heck? Just let him go. Let's wash our brush. And if you've painted with me before, you know we wash our brushes with odorless thinner. Shake off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That's the most fun part of the whole thing. I'm going to take a I'm going to take a one inch brush, one inch brush, pull it through the white, I'll be right back. I'm going to reach over here and get the least little touch of alizarin crimson, just a small amount. Okay, let's go up here. Now let's take, 
And you could do this with a fan brush or a two inch brush. I just thought I'd use a one inch today. Just want to put the indication of some nice, beautiful, fluffy little clouds that live up here in the sky. And they float around and have fun all day. Just wherever you want them, wherever you want them. There they go, there they go, there they go. See, one after another. As many or as few as you want in your world. Let's go on up here. There. We'll pick up a, just a touch more crimson. Just to put a little warm glow in these clouds. It looks like the sun's having a good day and he's sparkling through there. There. Now the paint that we use is very dry and very firm. And that way you can blend all this while it's still wet. If you use a thin soupy paint, chances are you're gonna become a mud mixer. And you're gonna be you're gonna be unhappy with me. I don't want that to happen. Be sure your paint's very dry and very firm. There we are. Now I'm just gently, gently blending. Gently blending. Okay, and we'll beat the brush. That just removes excess paint from the bristles. And we can continue to blend here. Just blend it all together. Knock off the excess one more time. Now then, very lightly, I'm gonna fluff this cloud up. Just grab it and fluff it. Just allow all this to come together. See there? But once again, now if you're using a thin, oily paint, oh, would you be in trouble here? And you'd really be upset. It's most critical that you use a paint that's very dry, very firm, and then this works. You can blend all this color without, without it mixing together. Okay, isn't that easy? Well, we've got a whole bunch of big fluffy clouds just floating around there. I'm gonna take some more of the phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, proportionately. Much, much more crimson than blue. There we are. I want a dark lavender color here. Take a little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. And let's make a big decision. Maybe there's just a nice little hill that lives Wee back, there it goes. Really push this into the fabric. Now I want these to be rounded on top. Just, just some nice little distant hills. There. I got a letter the other day and somebody wanted to know why I didn't paint some hills like it was in the east. There. So I thought we'd just do some nice Nice little distant hills today. Because they're fun and they're beautiful and they're quite easy to do. Take our large brush and very gently grab that paint. Because the canvas is wet, we can move it, we can blend it. See, and we can just pull it. Let all kinds of little things just happen. There. See, there? That easy. We can make the indication of some very nice little hills back here. And that's basically, basically all you have to do. Now I'm blending the bottom of it out, allowing it to mix with a liquid white, so it creates that illusion of mist down toward the base. Okay, maybe we'll have some rolling hills on top of that. Use the same old lavender color. I'm gonna add a little black to it. Just tap a little bit into the, into the brush. Okay, now. You have to start making some decisions. Maybe there's a hill. Oh, he lives right there. See, just big, nice, beautiful, rounded hill. And all we're doing right now is putting in dark color. So we're, we're certainly not committed at this point. We can change our mind, we can move this, we can do anything that we want to do. Okay, maybe there's another one here. I don't know. Just watch here, watch here. Maybe you want to change. See how you can make this one? You can change the shape, you can make it taller, shorter. There. However you want it, just let it go. Let it go. Okay. Tell you what, when I got the little brush going, shoot, I'm just gonna have some fun. I'll take some brown, crimson, crimson, black. So we got Van Dyke brown, black, crimson, little blue. 
I'm just going to basically just paint this in. I know all this is probably going to be covered up in here, so let's just paint it in. That's when that big brush really comes in handy. You could do this with a paint roller. All we're doing is applying some dark color. This is also an excellent scene to use some liquid black in and do all of this. There. And we have all that filled in. That easy. That'll save us a lot of work later on. Shoot, I'm lazy and I look for ways to make it easier. Use that same old dirty brush. I'm gonna go right into, right into uh, cad yellow, cadmium yellow. Reach over here, I get a touch of the yellow ochre, just a touch, and tap some color right into the bristles. Just tap them. Okay. Now then, maybe back here, just all kinds of beautiful little things that are on these hills. Now this is where we begin creating the shape, form, lay of the land, whatever you want to call it. This is where you start taking your time and, and really making these things look good. Every once in a while we'll get a little, add a little titanium white to our color. I want to make that hill stand out from the other one. See there? Boy, that son of a gun stands out now. As it comes around, it's going to get darker and darker, darker, darker. There. It's fantastic what you can do. All right, right up here. There's one. I'm going to add at least a little touch of the bright red to my color. I want this one to look at there. Maybe Jack Frost has come through there and he was having a good day too. Just layer after layer after layer. As many or as few as you want in your world. Okay, come right on over here. Maybe this one comes up and goes like that. We don't know. We don't know. Doesn't matter. However you think they should be, that's the way they ought to be. down here too. That easy. Now sometimes on little distant hills you have like little trees and stuff that are little patches of trees that have really really grown and get strong. So we'll mix up a little lavender color again. I'll just use a fan brush. What the heck. Get a little bit of that color on the brush. Now maybe maybe we're gonna have some little things that live right here between these two. And we can just take the brush and just tap. Just make the indication of some little, little patches of trees and stuff that live right in there. Maybe over here is another one, wherever you want them. Just put a couple here and there. Just breaks it up a little. And we can come right back, clean up the edges, put all that back. Okay. Shoot, that was fun. Let's do some more. Take some more blue, black, alizarin crimson. There we are. Clean off this old knife. I just wiped the knife on some, some paper towels there to clean it. No big deal. Or soft rag, whatever you happen to have. Okay, maybe back in here. Maybe there's some little trees. And I'm pushing very firmly here. Maybe it's just some little trees, see, that live right in there, like so. So you strike firmly. And then you have to make some big decisions. Where do they live? There. It's fantastic that you can make that many little tree indications that quick and that easy. Okay, now maybe we want to 
create a little mist at the base of these. We can just tap, just using a clean, dry brush, tap firmly. See there? creates that illusion of mist. There we go. Looks like those trees are just sort of sitting in some soft, misty area. And it's very easy to do. And if you're doing, if you're doing landscapes, you need this mist between each layer. That helps separate and brings them apart. And it makes your painting special. OK, I get carried away sometime here. This gets to be so much fun. Maybe there's some little trees that, I'll just use a big brush since we have it going here. Maybe there's some little trees that are a little bit closer. Use that same color. I want to put in another layer. Just layer after layer. There we go. Now then, we'll just keep using these two inch brushes. Shoot, they're a lot of fun. I'm going to take some yellow, reach over here and I'll get some bright red. We said Jack Frost was beginning to play here. So just tap a little bit right into the corner of that brush. Right into the corner. I want a nice bright color. Ooh, isn't that nice? Look at that. So you can just use this two inch brush, use just the corner of it, and put all kinds of beautiful little tree shapes. There we are. You know, when we finish this series, my gosh, there'll be nearly, nearly 200 Joy of Painting shows. I certainly hope you enjoy them. If you hadn't got to see all of them, call your local station. They're available to them. If you'd like to see some that you haven't, shoot, just give them a call. They like to hear from you anyway. There we go. Another question that I get repeatedly is what in the world I do with all these paintings that are left over that we from the shows? And we donate these paintings to PBS stations all over the country, and they auction one off, and they make a happy buck to help them out. So, if you'd like one, give your station a call and tell them to tell them you'd like to see one, and you'd be willing to make a make an offer on it if they had one. Help them out; they need your support. There we go. But see. Just using the top of that brush, we've created a beautiful row of trees here. It's unreal what you can do. Now then, clean, dry brush. I want to create a little mist at the base of this. Just a little. I just want to distort it. I don't want to, just, I don't want to destroy it. It's very easy to get in there. And it gets, oh, it gets feeling good. And you just, you just destroy it. But all we want to do here is just mist the base of it just so it sort of floats around. I just use the same old two-inch brush. Let's go right into some of our yellows and greens and all those pretty colors. Just tap the brush. Give it a nice little tap. And that's come right down. See, by changing the angle here, we'll create a new and different plane. Very soft and gentle. Look at that. I like that. I like that. I like soft paintings. They're a little harder to do than harsh paintings, but I like the soft velvet look. And with a little practice, you won't have any problems. Not any at all. Look at there. Okay. Well, we're just coming right along here. See, when you're when you're painting like this. Stand back and look at your look at your work. Son of a gun, you'll see all kinds of beautiful little things happening in it. And one of the one of the joys of this is that you can change your mind in midstream. You're you're not committed to your finished. You can we we have no patterns. We don't we don't worry about having any predetermined notion of where we're going. That may be one of the most fun things about this. Let me put a little dirt in here. So you stand back, take a look. And you might start off in your mind with something going on, and halfway through the painting, change your mind and decide, well, that's not what I want. I want to do this. I see that. And that's where the freedom comes in. That's probably, to me, the most impressive thing about painting this way is the freedom. You have total and absolute freedom here, a little brown and white. 
because I've just seen something here. That's why I'm, I'm going through all this talking. I see something here I want to change. It just it looks like a natural to me. So let me get a little yellow, little yellow, little green on my fan brush. Okay, now I'll bring a little, little grassy things right down here into this dirt, rocks and stones. That sort of cleans up the edges and brings it all together. Now then, let's see if your imagination is as wild as mine, because I see a beautiful place right here for a happy little stream. So let's try that. I'm going to take, first of all, I dip the brush into liquid white, then go into titanium white. The liquid white is there only to thin the titanium white, so it'll flow over this other color, and a little bit of blue in it, just to give it a little color. And in my mind right here, there's just a happy little stream that's coming down here, and it's splashing and carrying on, and whoops, bloop, fell over right there, see? There's a stone under the water right there, and it made it just, it had a happy little accident. Look at that, wherever you want it. And there's all kinds of little things happening, and just little bubblers going on there. Look at that. Boy, in our world, we can do anything. We can literally create little streams. Maybe, 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 maybe. Yep, Oop, see, another little thing. Tell you what, watch, watch. Getting excited now. Boy, this, you can get carried away with this. Maybe there's some stones that live here. There's a stone, see? Just Van Dyke Brown. Maybe over here, there's another stone, however many you want. Just drop them in. There's one. See? Take a little of that brown and white, and we'll put the indication here of a little highlight on top of that stone so it stands out. Now, then, back into my liquid white, titanium white, a touch, just a touch of the thalo blue. Just a touch. Now then, here comes my water. It's running along here, hits these stones, and goes poosh just crashes right over. Look at that. Look at that. And it's splashing down here where there's just all kinds of things going on. There it comes over the top. Just like a day at the races. Look at that. Just, I'm about to run out of canvas here. Maybe, maybe we can nail another one on the bottom keep going here. This is just better stop. I have to finish sometime today. Now, I'm going to go back into my lavender color. Let's put some land over here and close this in. As I say, if I get, if I get going here, we'll never get this rascal finished. My imagination sort of catches on fire and off we go. And I've got a director back here. She'll come out here and drag me right off the set if I don't get finished in time. And I'm going to pay for that comment, you watch. A little bit of grass right here, just to sort of bring all this together. On the other side, we need some little, little grassy things happening here too. We'll just bring it right down and sort of bring all that together. And a little cad yellow, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, touch of the bright red here and there, whatever. Whatever. Just sort of let them come together. Look at all that. But isn't it fantastic how that little stream just sort of, it just seemed like it was a place that it ought to live. That was where it should be. And when you're painting, look around in your painting. You might want to change your mind at any given moment. And that's your privilege. I'm going to add a little Prussian blue right in there, too, and some Van Dyke brown, some crimson. I want this dark. Maybe over here in this corner. We've got to fill that up. Maybe. There we go. Maybe. Maybe. Yep, yeah, there it comes. There's a nice tree. It lives right up here. I'm going to go into a touch. The dark sienna. I want this to start getting lighter as we work upward. I tell you what, this tree, 
this old tree. Yep, he goes right on off the canvas. There. And maybe, who knows, maybe, maybe there's another little tree right here that sort of leans over, hangs out over this. Wherever you want them. Let's put one on the other side. We don't want that left out. Dark sienna and some of our other dark colors. There we go. We'll just have another little leaner here. Sort of just closes that all in, makes it look nice. Makes it look nice. Take a little brown, paint that on the liner brush, and we'll just, here and there, we'll put in the indication of a few little trunks and sticks and twigs. That easy. Let's go on the other side here. We have a tree here. Zoom. Really helps you make those little noises. Of course, your family sort of looks at you like you, you're weird, but that's all right. That's all right. As long as you're happy. There. See there? All those little sticks and twigs. And, oh, here comes another one. Oh, let that brush wiggle and jiggle and just let the paint flow. I like trees that are, oh, they've had rough lives. They are all sh kinds of funny shapes and got arms that stick out everywhere. They've got some character to them. Shoot, these old telephone pole looking trees. They're no fun. These are fun. There we go. All right, all right. I'm gonna grab, I think I'll use a one inch brush for this. What the heck? Little touch of the liquid white. Pick up a little bit of dark color. So when we touch the yellow, all of that'll turn green. Tap a little bit of color into the brush. There, nice. Let's go up here. Now then, think about, start with this one, what the heck. Think about individual limbs and parts in these trees. Don't just throw them on at random. Look at there. Mm. Just let that come right on down here. All these little bushy leaves and branches and stuff. That's what makes your tree have shape and form. Let's add a little yellow ochre. Maybe even, shoot, we can get crazy and add a touch of the bright red. Just a touch, just a touch. Don't want to get too, oh, that's pretty. That is pretty. Jack Frost had a good day there. Boy, was he having a good day. I like all these colors. But now, in your world, you paint whatever color that you want because we're each individual. Each individual. We travel all over doing shows all across the country and we meet so many fantastic people. There. All right. Let me take my big brush. I'm gonna go right down here. Clean up the bottom of this, bring it all together. Look at that. Leave this dark under these trees, because normally there's a big shadow under these trees. Like so. Son of a gun. A little bit over here, and I think we have a finished painting. I'm going to grab the old liner brush and paint thinner on it. Let's sign this one. I think we'll call it finished. A little bit of red, thin down. And we can just write our name right on there. I hope you've enjoyed this painting. I've certainly enjoyed being here with you today. It's a fantastic painting. It'll teach you the versatility of this method. And from all of us here, happy painting and God bless. Production of this program is made possible by a grant from the Martin F. Weber Company, manufacturers of fine artist materials, and by Langnickel, manufacturers of select artist brushes.
Hi, welcome back. I'm certainly glad you could spend a little time with us today and do a fantastic little painting. So I tell you what, let's get started. I have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. And they'll come across in the same order as I have them on the palette, starting with the white and working around. Today, as you can plainly see, I have a black canvas up here. And I've just covered this with black gesso, allowed it to dry completely. And then on top of that, I've, I've added a mixture of midnight black and a little bit of Prussian blue. Not much Prussian blue, just enough to give it a little bluish tint. And I thought they would do a little mountain winter scene, something... Well, let's just do it and see what happens, okay? Start off with the old two-inch brush today. Go right into a small amount of titanium white. As I've mentioned before, these black canvases are fantastic if you want to if you want to amaze friends and relatives and etc. because they don't see you put the color on top of the black and it's transparent. And then when you come in here and you add a little bit of white, just all kinds of beautiful little things just happen. And today, I just want to add a very small amount of the titanium white just to get the indication of a little color here and there. Don't want a lot of color today, just a little. I'm going to put some clouds, I think, in here. So all I'm looking for is just a little background color. This will, this is behind the clouds. We'll do that first. Then we'll come in and we'll drop in a happy little cloud here and there. Mm. I like these black canvases because a little bit of color shows up so strong and so beautiful. It's just, it's unreal what you can do with them. Unreal. You know, I get letters from people every day and they send me photographs of the paintings that they're doing at home. And these black canvases may be some of the favorites. And these are from people that a lot of them have never had, they've never even suspected they had any art talent, they've never had any lessons. They just watched the shows, picked up ideas, got enough confidence, grabbed the old brush, and they're doing some beautiful paintings. And you can too, you really can. Let's wash the brush. Shake it off. Beat the devil out of it. All right, let's get us a one inch brush. If we're gonna have a happy little cloud, we'll just continue to use the titanium white. Just pull a little color into the bristles. Now we have to make our first major decision here. Where does our little clouds live in our world? Maybe, yep, you're right, there he is. I'm just using the top corner of the brush and just making tiny little circles. Just tiny little circles, tiny little circles. There you go. Just sing along as, you, as you're doing this. Think about tiny little circles. There you go. Okay. And blend it out. Look at that. But look how color stands out on this black canvas. It's unreal. It's unreal. Maybe there's another little cloud. He just floats around right here. Wherever. Wherever. There we are. Mm. Okay, maybe a little more of the color. Maybe, yeah, you're right. Let's have another cloud. This, this will give us a little bit of practice doing some happy little clouds. They're a lot of fun. A lot of fun, and they're very easy to do. Very easy to do. Maybe he comes right on. We don't know where it goes here. A little fluffer there. Clouds are so free. So free, they are just one of the freest things in nature. Maybe it comes out through here. There. Where's the job I want in my next life? I want to come back and be a cloud and just float around, and have a good time all the time. Okay, now I'll take a large brush and I'm very gently just begin beginning to blend the base of this very lightly. Just blend it, blend it, blend it. Once again, color shows up so much stronger on the black canvases. Much stronger than on the white canvas. There we go, look at that. Now you can blend these till they're dead, so don't overdo it. Just blend, a, just enough to stir them up a little bit, mix them up. There, a little bit right in there. Now I beat the brush just to remove excess paint off of it, so I don't have to clean it again. And I'm going to fluff them, lift them, tease them, pull them. This is not, not a very firm pressure I'm applying now. Just gentle, just gentle, 
just enough to grab it and move it a little bit. And very lightly, very lightly. Look at that, look at that. Boy, that's some fantastic little cloud. Look at there. They stand out once again so strong on these black canvases. This black gesso is one of the most fantastic things. Years ago, I used to just use black house paint. But I've had some letters from people, they wrote and told me that it uh, didn't do too well. So the black gesso is designed specifically for this. Okay. Let's build us a mountain. Let's build us a mountain. Today, I'm going to use just black Van, Van Dyke brown, a little Prussian blue. We'll throw some alizarin crimson in there too. What the heck? Looking for a color that looks very dark. It looks black. Okay, cut off a little roll of paint. Have it right on the edge of the knife. Now then, you have to make a major decision. Where does your mountain live in your world? I think he's going to live over here. So let's go right up in here and let's just drop us in. A nice big mountain. Nice big mountain. I like I like to do mountains because it gives you gives you a lot of experience with a knife. Once you learn how to do mountains with this knife, oh it's your friend. You can do anything. Maybe this comes over here. And there's another peak that lives right there. Wherever we want them. You can do mountains with this knife. You can do just, or you can do rocks and stones and roads and buildings. In some of the past series, we've done entire paintings using nothing but the knife. Absolutely nothing but the knife. There. We'll have to do some more of those type shows. It's interesting to see what can be done just using a knife. It's a little difficult because of the time restraints. There we go. Now I'm just using a two inch brush. I just want to pull this down. This is an excellent way of laying out highlights and shadows. You can see those brush strokes in there. Every stroke you make stands out. And I hope you can see those on your, on your TV set. But you can lay out entire mountains just, just using the brush strokes and you're not committed. You can change it repeatedly, literally hundreds of times, but it teaches you how to, how to make your mountain look the way you want it to look. There. So you can just get carried away, make all kinds of beautiful effects. Okay, let's put some snow on that mountain. For that, I'm gonna use titanium white. I'm gonna put a little bit of black with it just to dull it down just a dull it so it's not pure white. Pull the paint out firmly. Just really get in there and, and raise the devil with it. And then cut us off that little roll of paint again. You want that to be right on the edge of the knife. Okay? Now then, no pressure. Just let it touch the canvas and graze. All this touching is that roll of paint. It just grazes the canvas. Graze it and caress it. There make good friends with it. Look at that. Let that paint break and work for you. We have a very firm paint and it's designed specifically for this technique and it works so well. But you need a very firm dry paint. It's most most important. Now you have to make some big decisions. Where does these peaks live? Are they in the background in the foreground? We'll put this one in the foreground. Like so. There we are. Just let them go wherever you want them. Think about where the light would strike. Okay, I'm going to take some white, use some Prussian blue, Prussian blue, some black. Looking for a gray blue color, sort of a grayish blue. That's not bad, something like so. Once again, our little roll of paint. Now we can come back in here and we can begin laying in all kinds of little shadows. 
just follow the lay of the mountain here. See, here comes one. And to me, it looks like there's a valley right in there, so just pull it. Create that illusion. Create the illusion. There. Now then, see that peak right there? I want to push it back. Watch here. Watch here. You might have seen me do this before, but it's always fun. Just come directly, distinctly through that, and it pushes that son of a gun right on back. And here I want to leave that dark so it looks like a nice recessed area. Leave some dark in there at times. There we go. See, here's a nice one. And here and there, there's one. You can put the indication of shadows and it causes like little ridges and all kinds of beautiful little effects, very simply. There we go, change that. Let that go wherever you want it to. But practice these mountains. It will open whole new worlds for you once you learn to, to make friends with this knife. Get a little more of the titanium white with a touch of black in it. Pull it out flat. Once again, our little roll of paint. I want to put a few highlights over here on this little mountain. Mm, this reminds me of my home in Alaska. Where God was having a good day when he made Alaska. So beautiful. If you've never been there, you are to, you are to go see it while it's still wild. You can see more creatures there in one day. Mm. So beautiful. My favorite uncle sent me there. Uncle Sam, you know, he, he asked me if I'd like to go up there for a while. <laughs> and if you don't go, you're going to jail. You know how Uncle Sam asked you to go. But I went up there and I fell in love with the crazy place. It is so spectacular. I was born and raised in Florida. I didn't know that things like that even existed. I had never dreamed of them. All of those beautiful little effects. Just sort of bring that together right in there. Make like a little valley it lives in there. Little mountain goat has to have a place to go hide. Now then, we'll take, we'll take a two inch brush and very lightly we'll begin tapping, always following the angles in the mountain. I'm going to have snow down here, so it doesn't matter if we get a little paint down here. We're going to cover it all up. So don't be worried about it. Don't be worried about it. Over here, we want to follow these angles. Look at the angles in your mountain and follow them. We want to create that illusion of mist. Beat the brush to remove excess paint. Now, maybe right in here. Sometimes you can very gently just blend things together here. See, just blend them together. It'll make it look like it's a little misty area laying right between those. There, I'm gonna bring it right on down. Now very lightly, two hairs and some air. Grab that and lift upward. Gently lift upward, upward, upward. There, over here, follow these angles and lift it upward. Now you're just lifting right in here. You don't want to lift and destroy all of these. Just diffuse the bottom of the mountain so it looks like it's sitting right there in, right in the mist. Okay, we can wash this old brush. Give him a good scrub, shake him off. Cover a couple of cameramen and we're in business. We're in business. All right, let's use this same old dark color here. We had some black some Prussian blue, some Van Dyke brown, lizard and crimson. Doesn't matter. Shoot. There's some dark sienna. We can throw that in there. Whatever you have. Whatever. Let me clean my knife. Let's grab us a fan brush here. There. And I'm going to load it full of this dark color that we just made. Full of color. A lot of paint. And back in here, back in here we're going to have 
some little evergreen trees that are far away. Now they'll stand out against that lighter mountain color. Maybe they come down and there they go. I don't want this just to be straight, so I'm, I'm gonna have it go uphill here a little bit so we have some we have some variation in our in our land. Make him look a little more a little more interesting if it goes ever which way. Maybe it comes right on up here, I don't know, wherever you want it. Wherever you want it. That, that helps push all those mountains back. But you need that little misty area in between. That little misty area is your separator. It keeps, it keeps the mountains and the trees apart. I'm gonna put a little bit of that shadow color I had left here and just lift upward and to create the, the illusion of little distant tree trunks. I want this very subdued, very quiet. See, just shows up good, that's all. Now if you get one that's too bright and you don't like it, all you have to do is continue to rub it and it'll go away. It'll go away. There. Now maybe back here, shoot, let's have some fun. A lot of paint, a lot of paint. Well, what a messy brush I got there. Look at that son of a gun. I got paint all the way up to the furrow. That's okay. Maybe back in here there lives a few trees that are closer to us and they're big and they're strong. There they are, see? Now if you have problems making your paint stick over this mountain, because there's a lot of paint back here, add some paint thinner to your dark. I'm doing all right right here today. Sometimes you have a little problem. If that occurs, just add a little thinner because a thin paint will stick on top of a thicker paint there. And I do realize that happens sometimes. People write and tell me that they're having some problems. Usually if you just add a little paint thinner, that'll cure it. You know, I mentioned before, we travel all over the country and we give painting demonstrations and work with PBS stations and other charity groups around the country to help them make a happy buck or two. And if we get to your area, come see us. Shoot, I'd love to have the opportunity to meet you and talk with you. I've met literally thousands of people. It's, it's fantastic. They bring photographs of their paintings in. It's unreal what people are doing. And if you'd like to know when I'm going to be in your area, drop me a line. Just put your name and address on a card and send it to the address at the end of the station. They'll send it to me. We maintain a little mailing list and I'll, I'll try to drop you a card and let you know when we're going to be in your area. Boy, we got a whole mess of trees going there. Now they're just going to take a knife, just here and there. I know those are hard to see, but there's little lines in there. Shoot, we need to brighten this picture up. I'll put some snow in it. That'll, that'll zing it. Let me find a big brush. Okay, let's get serious. I'm going to go right into titanium white. Now, we have color on the canvas already. We have a blue and black mixture. So when we, when we put color on the get a little of that shadow color too. When we put color on there, it's going to get a little darker than what we have on the brush. And we're depending on that. Okay, got to make a big decision. Where does your snow live? Let's say, soon goes right there. Let's go uphill now. Look at that, see? Oh, I know. You're saying, Bob, you made a mess this time. You may be right too. I've certainly been known to do that. There we go. But we don't, we don't make mistakes, you know. We have happy accidents. Very soon, very soon after you start painting in this method, you'll learn that there's nothing that goes wrong. You can correct anything that happens. It's one of the things when I was teaching classes continually that's so good. And if you're ever teaching, this will help you with students is that you show them that there, there are no mistakes. You can fix everything that happens. And that really helps. It gets you over some of that fear. 
Well, we have a lot of fear we first touch a big old blank canvas. But once you, once you get over that, that's when you really, really begin to experience the joy of painting. There. See there? That quickly. Boy, we've got a whole snowbank in there. Just like so. Okay, where'd my brush go? There it is. Let's have an evergreen on the other side. Same old color. Same old color. I'm really loading that brush full of color. A lot of paint, both sides. All right. Maybe it is a tree that lives in our world. Yep, right there. Right there. Here he comes. There he comes. Just work back and forth, making the bristles bend downward. As you work down a tree, it gets stronger and stronger. Add more and more pressure. Make them bend more. It makes those little things that hang under the limbs, little, I call them hangy downs for lack of a better word. But they're always in evergreen trees, those little hangy down things. There. See, now this one's closer to us. And by putting trees in different places, that once again helps create that illusion of distance. Well, having a little friend right there. Okay. Now then, we can reach up under here, grab some of that dark, and pull it down. That creates our shadow under our tree, fixes the bottom of the tree all in one stroke. Now then, I'm going to take some white and a little bit of thalo blue. I like the thalo blue. It's a brighter blue. Nice bright blue. Okay. Maybe there's a happy little, little path. Need a little more blue. Doesn't show up enough for you to see it well. There. Just a little path that lives right in there. There he is. That blue makes it cold, but they will blue's quite warm. It's a nice blue. And here and there, you can bring some little things down. The fan brush, you can really get in there and smooth things out and put little individual things and blend them make all kinds of happy little things going on. I'll tell you what, this is a nice place for a little building. Let's have, maybe, right back here against these trees. Come right up here so we can, I'm going to scrape out a basic shape. Just take the knife, scrape out a basic idea of what it is that you want here. Just scrape it out. There we go. See? Still not committed at that point. All you're doing is just scraping it out. Okay, I'll take some white. Let's put a roof on there. Need a roof. Now here's a little trick. So you can come down that edge, get all your lines nice and straight, and then when you pull this down, then you'll have a beautiful straight edge. Sneaky, huh? There we go. Now we need a little bit of snow on the other side of the roof over here, just like that. Get into some Van Dyke Brown. There we are. See there, we're putting in, all we're doing is blocking in some color. There, just blocking it in. Now we'll take some dark sienna and some white. Very gently, very gently. Just pull straight down. Make us some nice boards there. Add a little Van Dyke Brown to that and darken it down a little more. There. Now we can just whack off the bottom, get it the way we want it. You know what, maybe, I'll tell you what. Let's go right up in here. Excuse my arm just a second. You can see that. I'm going to put some little things like that. And we go right up here on the top. A little, a little bit of white. Maybe we'll just take and turn this into a little church that lives out here. Put a little steeple right up there. And it's all covered with snow. Boy, it's really cold out here. There. There's snow laying all up around there. Now maybe, tell you what, let's do this. 
maybe they're getting ready for a service and they've turned they've turned the lights on here they've got the lights burning in the windows so let's just scrape out the indication of some happy little windows I'm gonna take a little bit of cad yellow just put in the indication of a little light coming through those windows there people are going to be arriving pretty soon cold day cold day mm. okay back to my fan brush here now then let's put some snow right up around the foot here like that okay maybe tell you what maybe right here in the foreground let's just put a little tree that lives right there there he is give him a little friend or two I'm gonna push up just want to put a little something here and it'll push everything back and that helps create that illusion of distance in your painting a little bit of a little bit of shadow underneath I think we about have a, a finished painting. Hope this gives you some ideas, shows you what can be done in black canvas. Hope you enjoy our little church in the, in the snow. From all of us here, happy painting and God bless.